Hi friends, today Dr. Dangerous Medicine Made Halwa welcomes Ortho Frog. So, Dr. Ortho Frog is a specialist consultant, traumatologist, and orthopedician, and he would be taking all the clinical surgical uh, subjects for you. Uh, though uh, today the first topic for discussion is uh, fractures. The fractures are easy, but sometimes understanding is difficult for our students. So, today Ortho Frog will be making all your understanding related to the factors very easy and conceptual and uh, with that i welcome ortho frog and he will start his lecture friends uh, welcome to uh, the lectures on orthopedics and traumatology today we are going to talk about uh, classification of fractures as you see i've written on the board but before talking about classifications i want to talk a few things about trauma uh, globally speaking IHD, like that is ischemic heart disease and stroke, are the biggest killers in the world. Leading, they are the leading cause of death in last 15 years, statistically speaking. Uh, CDC, that is from USA, reports about trauma are shocking. In the age group from age 1 to age 44, that is uh, the younger age group, Trauma is the single largest cause of death, amounting to about 47% in America. It is very important to early diagnose and treat a person who has suffered an injury. Rapid assessment and prompt treatment has always been the key to improve the mortality rates in the young. And here is where the classification comes into picture. We begin with our classification of fractures basic types of fractures we would start uh, the classification are two types you can uh, there are different types as you can see of classification uh, of classifying the fractures the basic types of you can simply say that a fracture is a simple fracture or a complex fracture a simple fracture is a one which is closed and, and is closed there's a good soft tissue cover the skin is intact and generally speaking the fracture has just two parts. The complex or the open fracture can be multi fract fracture and it has a very poor skin cover or maybe sometimes very less skin cover or a, a compromised state of soft tissues. The open fracture can be further divided or further classified into two types that is inside out or the outside in. Uh, what do you mean by inside out? By inside out you mean that the bone has been injured in such a way that the fragment of the bone or the fragment of the fracture has pierced the skin from within and it is coming out and is in direct contact with the outside environment while in the outside in type the injury is such that it has breached the skin and the soft tissue layer and the environment is in direct contact with the bone now this type of open trauma or complex fracture is more prone to infection. Simple fracture having a good skin cover and a good skin so, uh, soft tissue cover is less prone to infections. Coming to a dif different type of classification, classification which is based on uh, displacements. Uh, the displaced fractures uh, are displaced because of the muscle forces acting on the bone the forces causing the fracture gravity and anatomical location of the fracture what do we mean when we say that the muscle forces are acting on displacement for example a femur broken into two parts has many muscles attached to its distal part and many muscles attached to its proximal parts so these distally attached muscles will pull the bone to their side while those attached to the proximal part would pull the muscle fragment to their side hence ultimately displacing the fracture sometimes as you can see here there can be undisplaced fractures wherein although the muscle forces and these forces are acting on it the stability of the fracture is such that the bone has been broken but there is no displacement then there are different types of displacement which you can uh, see using an x-ray uh, you can see a simple shift in two fragments 
there can be a, a displacement in which there's an angulation the bone has been angulated you can see that there is a rotation sometimes you cannot really uh, see it on a two-dimensional x-ray that's a rongenogram but you can when uh, while treating when a surgeon opens up uh, the fracture to treat it using an open reduction internal fixation technique you can very well say see that uh, the two uh, parts of the fractures have been rotated so why is this important to know that there's a rotation or there's an angulation you have to bring this down to its normal position to its stable position and then use a modality to fix it so generally speaking an undisplaced fracture has better prognosis than a displaced fracture in terms of treatment in terms of its long-term outcome okay so this uh, finishes our types of displacements and the classification based on it now we move on to our classification based on patterns how are fracture patterns important and why are they important you can see that i have drawn different types of fracture patterns here uh, the transverse type transverse type which is the most common we see uh, the oblique fractures, the spiral fractures, commutative, that means it is it has multiple fragments which we have already seen in complex trauma. And segmented. Based on etiology, there are two types. You can divide the fractures, generally speaking, into traumatic types and those with pathological types. Uh, in the next lecture, in the coming lecture, we would talk more about uh, the pathological types of fracture and the causes of uh, fractures based on the pathology when can you say that a bone has been fractured by definition you mean that a breach in structural continuity of a bone or bones is called a fracture why is classification of fractures important to us uh, there are four specific points which i think personally that gives a lot of importance to classify a fracture students might think that why is this lecture important what is the importance of this lecture by classifying the fractures you have a general idea it's sort of a backbone of planning of treatment whether the fracture would need a surgical treatment or a non-surgical treatment uh, whether it is whether you want to conserve it or you want to open up and put in a plate or use an external fixator so classification of fract fractures uh, make a, the backbone of plan it again simplifies the decision making whether it is in the ER whether it's in the operating room or at the in the ward bedside uh, it becomes very important whether uh, a fractured limb needs uh, to be uh, conserved and can that patient be sent home from the ER or should that patient be sent to the OR whether it's an emergency whether there is a neurological compromise a vascular compromise so all this when it comes down it, it, it simplifies the decision making for the treating doctor uh, the class uh, the classification also gives you a rough idea or um, an exact uh, uh, prognosis of how the patient would fare secondly speaking about physical therapy the classification simple fractures a simple transverse fracture or an undisplaced fracture requires lesser number lesser number of days under physical therapist while complex traumas and based on their anatomical location the type of complexity it has decides what type of physical therapy it needs and for how long so this winds up our importance of classification of fracture